Good day, good day everyone and once again we're back together. All right, so we are looking at work, energy and power. All right, let's get right into it. Of course, if you have not subscribed, do the right thing and uh, you get yourself some good content in maths and science. All right, so we given this question from the 2023 May June exam, right? And it says an electrical motor pulls a 20 kilogram crate right from rest okay so if i were you so what i would do is as soon as they give me that they say to me from rest at point a so i know that point a represents an initial velocity of zero okay so they say this is up an inclined plane right and by means of a light inextensible rope okay they say to us the inclined plane makes an angle of 18 degrees between the horizontal okay um or rather with the horizontal and bc and d are points on the inclined plane and the distance between a and c is 15.6 meters okay that's what we see there as shown in the diagram below right now they say to us the motor exerts a force of 96.8 newtons on uh, to the inclined plane uh, on the rope and a constant frictional force of 13.5 newtons acts on the crate as it moves up on the inclined plane. All right. Now, for those of you who've watched my videos, I've said to you, once they tell us that we've got an applied force and or the frictional force, we know it is a non-conservative system, isn't it? So it tells us that now uh, that there is a presence or there is a presence of uh, non-conservative forces right and as a result we know that uh, we cannot say mechanical energy is conserved right now they say to us define a non-conservative force now remember non-conservative forces are forces whose work done right depends on the path taken so i'm gonna write that in blue right so these are forces whose work done depends on the path taken okay now remember if you take frictional force for instance right it depends if i'm going left friction goes to the right uh if i go right and friction would go to the left okay so in this case it depends on which path i'm taking that will determine the path of friction right so in this case the next question they say use energy principles to calculate the speed of the crate when it reaches point c now, I want us to note there. So first of all, what are the forces that are acting on point C? I mean, on, on the trolley, right? So we know that there is the, uh, the force of the motor, okay? So I'll just say force motor there. And they told us this is 96.8. This is 96.8 Newtons, all right? But we also had a frictional force value of 13.5, if I remember correctly. Yes. So we know we've got friction that opposes motion. Okay. Right. But remember, we also have the component of gravity. Okay. So in this case, the parallel component of gravity, Fg parallel. Of course, uh, you know, our usual suspects, which is the normal force as well as gravitational uh, the perpendicular component of gravity right now i want you to note there are those three forces that are acting parallel to the incline and that's what we're interested in right um so we wanted to find out the speed when this thing gets to uh, uh, point c right so what we're going to do is we're going to use the work energy theorem right so the network done is equal to the change in kinetic energy please stay with me right so in this case we note that we need the network done right but what is the work done by the net force it's actually f net multiplied by delta x right the cos of the angle and this is equal to half m times vf squared minus vi squared you can say half m vf squared minus half m vi squared but the 
fact of the matter is half M is common between those two terms. Now, I want us to note, we were given in this case the friction to be 13.5, right? Fg parallel, you remember that we can calculate this. We always say Fg parallel is Mg the sine of theta. In this case, theta, I take this theta as the angle of elevation, right? So if you haven't watched my videos on work energy and power, please do yourself that favor, right? So in this case, that's Fg parallel. That's the parallel component. So what I'll do first is that I'll calculate the sum of forces. So that would be Fg, uh, rather the force applied by the motor, plus, in this case, a negative friction, plus a negative Fg parallel, right? And all of these working together, okay, yeah, let me use a square bracket there, multiplied by delta x, the cos of theta. Now, please remember, this theta now, right, is not the same as that, uh, I mean, it's not the same as that one we were talking about, right? In fact, maybe let's, we can give it another name. Now, this theta is the angle. Remember, when we use the work done formula, right, we always say this is the angle between the direction of motion and the force in question, right? So now, this is 96.8, okay? So 96.8 minus 13.5 minus... Now remember, that's Fg parallel, that's Mg, the sine of theta. The mass is 20 kilograms, okay? So that's minus 20 times 9.8, the sine of the angle of elevation. And remember, angle of elevation is given as 18 degrees, right? So that's 18 degrees. Multiplied by delta x. Now remember, what is our delta x? Our displacement is 15.6, right? So this is 15.6. The cos of, now when you take this uh, net force, you'll realize that this net force ends up being uh, positive. So it's telling us, in this case, we're taking the direction of motion as positive. So this will be the cos. Now remember, I say that theta is the direction, is the angle between direction of motion and the force in question, right? So our motion is going up and the net force is also upwards. So what's the angle between them? It's actually zero, right? Okay, so this is equal to half of 20, uh, half of 20. Now remember, in this case, vf squared that's the velocity we're looking for but our initial velocity was zero right so this will be minus zero squared all right now i'm gonna do our mathematical gymnastics let's put all of this in the calculator okay so i'm going to say um okay let's put the calculator this side and say 96.8 minus 30 15.5 uh, minus 20 times 9.8 20 times 9.8 uh, the sine of 18 degrees okay right so that's what we get there this is multiplied by 15.6 and cos of 0 is 0 right so that's cos of zero. So that's the answer that we get on the left-hand side. Okay, we get an answer of 354, right? Now we need to divide it by half of 20, right? So we're going to say divide by half of 20, which is 10. So I'm going to say answer divide by 10, okay? And take the square root, okay? Right, so take the square root of our answer and what do we get there? So our final velocity in this case is 5.96, okay, meters per second. 
and that is our final velocity. That is the velocity when the uh, object or when the trolley gets to uh, a C, right? So that's what we get there. All right. Now let's go to the next one quickly. They say to us, calculate the minimum average force dissipated by the electric motor to pull the crate from A to C. Now, guys, um, what I want you uh, to note, when you go to this motor, right, we know that we're having a force that pulls the entire thing, okay? So once uh, the motor pulls, there is some power that it uses. Now, remember, what do we know power to be? Power is the rate at which work is done. But you agree with me? We're not given anything by uh, 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 of time there. So now I'm going to say for the next question, I know that power is the rate at which work is done, right? But what is work done, right? So we don't know what time is, right? We can, of course, calculate the time and so on. But what we also know is that uh, power can be force multiplied by the average velocity, right? I'm going to show you how to calculate average velocity just now. But which force are we looking for? This would be the force of the motor because we're looking for the power uh, that is um, used by the motor, right? So in this case, we're going to say, well, that's the force, force of the motor multiplied by average velocity. So that's V initial plus V final divided by two. Now, guys, I want you to note, if we were given uh, uh, every, I mean, a uh, constant velocity, we didn't need to do this, but this object was not moving at constant velocity. So in this case, what I'm going to do is this is going to be 96.8, right? Our initial velocity was zero. Our final velocity is 5.96. This is divided by two, okay? So that is how we're going to get the power. So that's 96.8 into 5.96 divided by two and I get 288.46, okay? So that's 288.46 watts. So that's how I'm going to get power. But we could have also used this way, right? Remember, if I wanted to get the power, this would be work done by the motor divided by the time, right? So how would I get time? So I would say, Delta X is VI plus VF over 2 times Delta T. Now, you know this uh, formula from equations of motion, right? Uh, the displacement that we have is 15.6, okay? So that was 15.6. Our initial velocity is 0. Our final velocity 5.96, uh, I believe, yes. Uh, divided by 2 times the change in time, right? And of course, uh, what you do there to calculate the change in time, okay, if I said 15.6 uh, divided by that entire bracket, which is uh, 5.96 divided by 2, okay? Right, and the time I get there is 5.96. Three, uh, 5.23 seconds. Okay, so that's the time that I would get. Now, to get the work done or the power, you'd say work done, which is force of the motor, delta x cos of theta divided by time. And what you do is you'd say, well, the force of the motor in this case, uh, that was 90 6.8 times 15.6, which is displacement, the cos of. Now, remember, they were in the same direction, direction of motion and the force in question. That would be zero, so that makes this zero, divided by 
the change in time, which is 5.23, right? And I can assure you, ladies and gents, we will get exactly the same value, right? That's 96.8 times 15.6 cos of 0. And all of this divided by 5.23, right? You see, um, it's just a subtle question of the decimals, but uh, the value is approximately the same. Okay, and please remember power is measured in watts all right now i hope you got you got that all right and then the uh, few last questions right now they say to us when the crate reaches point c the rope breaks the crate continues moving up to the incline uh, up the incline plane comes to a stop at d and then slides down the plane past point b right they say draw a labeled free body diagram uh, for the crate as it slides down the plane past point B. Now remember, when the, bro the rope has broken, right, which forces are now acting? Okay, there's no longer an applied force. And now it's going down the incline, right? So it means we're still going to have, in fact, let me do this. Uh, so which forces do we have? We still have frictional force, which is opposing the motion. So that's friction over there, okay? But we also have the normal force. So that's the normal force and gravitational force. Okay, right. So those are the three forces that are acting, right? Okay, so uh, please write it out in full. That would be normal force. That's frictional force and gravitational force okay right so those are the three forces that are acting of course you can use components uh, but you know examiners kind of uh, discourage us using components but you're more than welcome to use the components of gravity okay and finally they say to us uh, draw a velocity time graph for the entire motion of the crate starting from point a until it passes point B again, right, on its motion down the incline. Now, please, I want you to note, ladies and gents, this is a velocity time graph, okay? And what we must do, this is time in seconds. This would be velocity in meters per second. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start from zero, right, for this graph because we started from rest. So this would be at A, right? And what happens? It accelerates up, all right, until it gets to point C. And they say the rope breaks at point C, and so the velocity begins to decrease, right, until it stops okay at point d All right so this is at point d i mean uh, at point c this is when the velocity was now 5.96 okay and what happens then it starts to reverse so uh, then our velocity time graph looks something like that as it continues and this obviously would be at B when it passes again. All right. So this is how your velocity time graph would look like. Okay. All right. I hope that you understood all of that. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you guys again. You would have obtained yourself 17 marks. Okay. From me, your favorite uncle. I'll see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.